Let's go into something just for a second. Good word I heard, too. It's beautiful, too. Let's, let me give you a little bit of understanding of the ecstasy of worship. All right? Remember where this is, Brother Juan. All right? So we're going to have to cut this and then make two of them, all right? The ecstasy of worship is, you know, in the, in the book we have saw over and over again where the prophets, they would be in such a state of mind that they would be what we would call today beside themselves. They would get in such an emotional state because they were walking with God. They were worshiping God. Am I making sense? We saw it with, with a few figures in the Bible. We'll get to them, all right? The ecstasy of worship is a state of being overcome with powerful emotions. It's what happens to a person when they're in true worship. Natural reasoning seems to be suspended. And self-control is suspended. You know, the things we call normal behavior. This is static form of worship. It actually employs music and dancing to enhance the environment that one is entering into. When we were children of this world, children of Belial, we would go to parties, concerts, shows, and either listen to worldly music, be it called rock, rap, soul, country, and we would employ the same things that would induce sort of an emotional seizure or frenzy. If I can use those words to try to bring an impact to what I'm getting to. We would use these particular vehicles to help us to get to these states where reason is suspended. And some of these other vehicles we would use, whether it be drugs, alcohol, in order to bring our minds to a certain place. You know, because if we had these particular instruments to help us, then it would not cause us to feel guilty or embarrassed. These were all tools of Satan to mask and insulate you from God. You didn't know it at the time because you were children of the Satan. These were things that the Satan, the Satan used to trick and deceive us into believing unless you do these things. This is the only way you can have a good time. And so we employed these things. And when we employed them, we did them diligently. This is what I call, used to be our church. You know, when we was cheering the Bilal, that this was our church. We could go to sanctuary anytime. Are y'all are y'all folks all right? Y'all now let me let me remind y'all something. I I am part of the righteous. Y'all hear me? I'm for you. I'm not against you. I'm not your enemy. I want to make sure we define this real quick. Are you following? They are the enemy out there, and you got a great enemy in you. Then you know I'm the last of your worries. I'm not your enemy. I don't care what the devil tell you. All right. It's like we're bracing ourselves for what's next. We're going to get you. Hey, we're going to get you now. I told you from the beginning we're going to get you, so there's no need embracing. Amen? Well, this was our church, and we faithfully attended it. Choke pay tithes. Attended services, worship without any problems. Hmm? There we did too. Boy, we boy did we dance. Hmm. You know the reason why we are faithful to that? Because we had people who are of like mind. 
now in Christ. We come to, to the one who created us because we are familiar. We, we come to the ones that, that created us, the, the king himself, the Elohim, the Ariah, Yeshariah, him, the great I am. And we don't come to him and give him the same diligence in worship because we're not familiar with him. Nor his ways. The Bible attributes this kind of ecstatic state to the spirit of the Lord. Mm. The spirit of Yahweh the Most High which falls or rushes upon his people. The spirit that transforms us then as a carrier or instrument of his divine will, divine message, he um, begins to bless us with his presence. Amen? This is what happens when someone dances before the Lord. I mean, how many times we come in and we see people dance before the Lord and we become spectators? We begin to look at a puzzled look and we forget about the church of Satan we just left. You see, when the king of glory, you come into a, a place like this and where people are baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who has the same nature as the one who created us and stuff, Jesus often spoke of new wine that he would give to us that we would be able to drink. And that's the time of ecstasy that we are in communion with our God. Except this new wine that he gives us, it doesn't cause us to be drunk. But it causes us to be intoxicated in the spirit. And so some of us were just flat out alcoholics out there. But when we come here, all of a sudden, we become, we, we, we adopt the attitude of abstinence. Uh-oh. Out there we can use all those instruments and vehicles as tools to induce a certain state. We don't feel bad or guilty at all. We come to the church and God's got greater tools. Amen. He even give us his spirit to help us. All this music is centered towards lifting him up and worshiping him. And we come in here and, and, and we become spectators. David told Mikael that, you know what, I'll be even more vile than what I was before when it comes to me dancing before the Lord. Even Saul, before he got known, he went up to what a prophet's was. And the spirit of the Lord is what the scripture says. Amen. Fell upon him and he began to dance before the Lord. You know, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And so then God turns around and gives us the same Holy Spirit, but this time it's not upon us, but he is in us. And I'm a marvel, and I'm at an amazing how come we can't induce this same type of ecstasy when the scriptures tell us to not be drunk with wine where it's in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And even while we're in that particular state of ecstasy, when we're just me and God and stuff, we're making songs and we're having melodies in our hearts unto the Holy Ghost. And so we end up not really understanding what's going on. I understand completely what's going on. I remember often that even in the scripture it says that while Peter yet prayed, he fell into a trance. Most of us don't even know what a trance is. Only trance we know is when we done had too much and we wake up next morning don't know where we've been. You see, because we have sown so much to the flesh and stuff to understand what the spirit is, it's just, it's, it's, it escapes us. We're not even seeking the things of God like we did in the world. He gives us his Holy Spirit because the, you know, God has a desire to be close to his people. Yeah. He has a desire for somebody to obey him. That's why he created man. Yeah. Amen. Am I talking to us here today? The Holy Spirit talking to you? Yes, Is the Holy Spirit talking to you? Yes, so whether you coming around golf clapping being, whether you come from the country juke joint or the soul juke joint or the rock juke joint and stuff how is it that you now that you got the same spirit as the same people that God only gives to his people so how is it that all of a sudden we can't induce this same type of ecstasy of worship 
Why is it that we're very reserved then? I'll tell you the reason why. Because in the time during the week when we could have got drunk on the Holy Spirit, we did not come into the assembly intoxicated with, his, with him. Because, see, it, it, hey, if you had what you call a good time all week long, when it come time for Sabbath to come, when we're really playing the instruments and we're really lifting up the name of Jesus, this should be the time for falling out all over the place then. But we can't do that. I got, you know, I just clean my clothes, brother. And... And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they said, they said, you know what? You know, these men are drunk. That's what the world said to them. They said because they were familiar with people that were drunk. They said, these men are drunk. They are told up. Somebody came up and had to say who was sober like that. Said, hold on, let me come up by this for a second. Hold on. Man, these ain't drunk like you think they are. They are not drunk as you suppose. Look what time it is. Are we making sense? What are we doing? We're bringing, we're bringing the correlation between the old and the new. The difference between what you were when you were dead in your sins and trespasses and now that you're born again and close to Christ. Look, look at what he's done and, and look how reserved we are to him. Oh, I'll give him my all. Oh, you will. Hmm. We just want to talk to you, brothers and sisters. I told you we're going to get you. Let the word get you. So rather than us sitting up watching Dad Dow and everybody, Sister Barb and everybody else going, yee, look at them and stuff. It's, maybe you ought to get some wine. Maybe, I don't know, but hey, Jesus did say you cannot put new wine into old bottles. He did say that, didn't he? I wonder what he's talking about when he says something like it. You think I'm on point, Elder? Hmm, you think I'm on point? Hmm. I think I'm on point. I think we have a lot of things to really be looking at. What do you think? You think we got something we really need to be looking at? I think we do. Hmm? Jesus said, when you get this drink right here, you'll never thirst again. What's it saying? It's saying that, you know, that's something we need to be doing. So, you know, my admonishment is to you is, is don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't put yourself in positions, places, associating with people that will cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved. Because you don't feel him, you need to start checking to see if he's turned off. Do not the Spirit bear witness? How does the Spirit bear witness? He gives you that feeling. Is he not able to be touched with the feeling of our infirmities? Yeah, yeah he can be. Fr yeah, and if you don't feel him in certain areas and stuff, brother, so you need to start checking to see if he's grieved. Right. <sighs> Talk to us, Jesus. Talk to us, Holy Spirit. And we, we need this. We truly do need this. So the disciple or the student of God, we see usually... This so-called outrageous, dramatic, bizarre behavior among many of the prophets, Saul, David, Ezekiel, um, as an example, they all engaged in a dance. Are you following me? And they often fell into a trance. And in that trance and in that dance, they were with God. Oh, boy. Let me take you through the steps what takes place in case you are afraid. We'll see if I've been there before. Huh? Usually you start off naturally in the flesh and stuff, and you go through the motions of doing the things that the Bible says. You clap your hands, you lift up your voice, you begin to sing praise unto God. And then you start to really get past all the obstacles of the flesh. And then all of a sudden your mind is in tune with the spirit, and the spirit is in tune with you. And then all of a sudden that intimacy begins to take place kind of like a climax. It, it does. It starts to take place. And what happens is, is, is that there's a oneness that's together. There's warmth in there. That's called the anointing. Yeah. And as you begin to be, give more of yourself. 
to him. As you begin to get more of yourself to him, he begins to pay back with more. As you begin to open up yourself more, he pays back with more. And that intimacy begins to arouse even the more so. Even to the point of the more so that you find it very hard to control yourself because at this time you are resting in the arms of the one who you don't mind being controlled by. Hey, Amen. Mm. And sometimes usually when you, after you finish coming down off of this, you're like, whoo, whoo, what a ride. My God of mercy. I well, understand the rest of you don't know what I'm talking about, but I just thought I'd just let you in on it just for a minute. You know, I just thought I'd let you in on it. Most of us have I been there. Don't know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Because, see, when you're in. You an intimacy. Well, what are you dancing for? Because, you know, Ezekiel said that the word is like fire. Shut up in my bone. <laughs> Can you imagine being in the eternal kingdom where that feeling is forever? We sure we're gonna need a we're gonna need a we're gonna need a spiritual body, brother. This natural body ain't no way. It can't take it, brother. It can't take it. It cannot take it. Not this natural body, boy. Whoo, Lord our mercy. Mm. So this is the reason why we would read in the book and see that when even in prayer, they would often fall into a trance. So. Oh, praise God. But see, again. When, when the spirit of the Lord will come upon the Navis, whew, the prophets, when they would come upon them and stuff, this is what would happen to them. That's why the scriptures say over and over again, he says, man, he says, boy, them prophets, they look out from a long distance away. They said, boy, man, we would love to be there to experience him what y'all got. That's what the Bible says. And here we are, got what they were loving to experience, and this is, this is us. Mm-hmm. 